Hello and welcome to Universal Joint or U-Joint Design. In this video, we're going to talk about how a U-Joint functions, potential applications that's used in the real world to give you some ideas of maybe how you can use it for 3D printing, and then lastly, how it's designed. So here is your Universal Joint. And as you can see, it's comprised of five parts. Two, red, two pins, one's red, one's orange, a centerpiece, which is green, and then a light, uh, light blue and dark blue um, bodies, I guess we can call them they're the pivot points. So essentially these are used in a multitude of different things. Uh, the automotive industry uses them actually for drive shafts, in the drive shafts, shafts and drive trains of cars. Um, they're also, this design is actually kind of half based off of a U-joint that's used in tools. So essentially for a tool, they it'll bend so that you can get around a corner and still tighten something or loosen something um, with having that bend ability. So the way that it functions is it can rotate in two different directions so you can see it can bend this way back and forth and then essentially the other way it can go is you can have it go the other way as well so this way back and forth. So the really neat thing when it comes to this is it can go in multitude of different directions so you can have it where it rotates about a point and can bend and rotate to, like I said, tighten something up. So let's take a quick look at a section view to see what it looks like from there. So in this section view, you can see that the pieces are gonna be designed in a couple different ways, and we'll go into the design in a minute. But essentially, you can see that when this rotates about, it does not hit the bottom of that other U-joint body. And this allows you to have about 180 degree rotation along one axis. You can also see that there's the two pins that one has a hole in it, the other one doesn't, and this allows for that rotation as well. And then essentially, if you look at it from here, you can see that this can rotate about an angle as well as it rotates around the other body. And this is what's gonna allow you to have that functionality when you're using it. So let's take a look at some of the parts and see how they're designed. As you can see here, this is one of the two components that rotate for the main portion of the U-joint. And it does look quite complicated, but we're gonna go through how this is actually designed. So if we go back all the way to the start, I just made a simple cylinder. And essentially, just to give you an idea for dimensions, this one's an inch and a half in diameter and two inches tall. Next, what I did is I did the cutaway for the general shape of where it's going to be rotating about. And please note that I had to do a little bit of playing with, with the two components to get this fine tuned, but just to let you see how this works. So I essentially made it a quarter of an inch radius, which is half an inch diameter about the top, 45 degree angle, this could be played with, it could be 30 degrees, 60 degrees, just whatever you think makes the most sense for what you're designing. And I made it one inch and a sixteenth tall. And this was the main dimension I had to play with. So after I got this cutaway done, I then made the cutaway in the other direction where the other U-joint's going to be kind of rotating about. And that was essentially made a quarter inch plus 15 thou, and then cut through. Next, I made a radius of the corner just to give it a little bit more strength. I then made the extrusion for the hole. So this is for the smaller hole, which I designed to be an eighth of an inch. And then this one I made an eighth of an inch plus 0 0.014, 0 0.015, sorry. And then that's what that hole's for, just so it can fit. And then the last thing I did is I just did a quick little chamfer on the edge just to clean it up a little bit more. So essentially it's actually quite simple to design this. It just looks more complex than it actually is. The other U-joint you can see here, it's exactly the same design. The only difference is this hole here, I made it 0.25 plus 15 thou, as you can see. So that's being the only difference. And that's to allow for the other pin to fit through. So now let's take a look at the two pins and see how those are designed. Looking at pin one, you can see it's a little bit more unique than the other pin you'll see, and that's because it has a hole for the other one to fit into. So the way that I went about this is I essentially made 
a choice on what I wanted the bigger pin to be. So in this case, I made it a quarter of an inch in diameter. Then I made it an inch and a half long because that's essentially the diameter of the, oops, sorry, uh, inch and a half long, which is the diameter of the two main bodies. I created a chamfer. For this one, I believe I did 0.04, just an arbitrary number, just to give it a nice chamfer. And that's just to make it a little bit cleaner. And then the last thing I, I did was I made the hole for the other pin. I know it's going to be an eighth of an inch, so I made this 15th thou bigger. And that essentially is how this pin's made. The other one, much simpler. It's an inch and a half long with a diameter of an eighth of an inch and a chamfer. So you can see here, eighth of an inch. And the chamfer, I believe, I just did 20 thou. It's half the size. And that's, again, just to get it, give it some more cleanup. Now let's take a look at the midpoint, and then we can talk about how this is all assembled. So here you can see the midpoint, and we're going to go through how this is actually designed as well. So I started off by actually making a cylinder. And the way that I went about doing that is I knew that my flats were going to be a quarter of an inch across both flats. So I essentially made it 7 eighths plus a sixteenth, which is 15 sixteenths diameter to give me just a nice radius there. There's other ways you could do it. It's just how I decided to design it in this case. I then went and cut away that by making another sketch with the flats and then cutting away from that to give me those nice radiuses. Next I added the holes. So the first hole I did was for the bigger pin and that's about the side that's not chamfered and that is essentially a quarter of an inch plus 15 thou as you can see here. Then I also made the other pin hole for the other one, which is an eighth of an inch plus 15 thou as well, as you can see here. And that's essentially how the block is made. So now let's take a look at how all the parts come together to be assembled. So here you can see all the parts disassembled. Now let's take a look at how this is going to come together. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put the block in with the bigger hole side first. You're going to put the pin in with the hole in it. You'll put the top portion in and then the final pin together. And this will essentially allow you to have a complete U-joint. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Otherwise, this is Tyler with 3D Printer Store, and I hope you have a great day.